a pink triangle and the words silence equal death. That's the famous symbol of the fight against AIDS and for LGBTQ equality. Three decades after it first appeared, in the light of the survival rate for people with HIV and with all the advances made by the community, does it still have relevance? Well, apparently it does. And we're about to hear from a regional organization representing the gay and transgender community from Caribbean roots. According to them, in 2016, it's time for Breaking Silences, the title of an upcoming symposium that will address some of this community's issues and concerns. But first, we're going to listen to a few of the voices involved. It's about resilience. It's about determination, perseverance. It's about making it through. It's about having faith. It's about being strong. Like, wow, my father's never gonna know, and I would never really know if he, um, I would never know if he loves me for who I was. You have these slurs thrown at you, you're like, you know, oh, bona fide, like burning hell. Like, how are you gonna just tell someone burning hell for walking down the street and holding hands? I thought the demon I was fighting was me believing that. I was a girl, the demons that I was fighting were people seeing that I knew I was a girl and them trying to take advantage of that. Like, God knows where my heart is. Just because I'm gay don't mean I don't go to church. I go to church. Someone else's thoughts of you don't make you. They don't create you. I'm at a spot where I just feel like I can appreciate love. Because um, when, you're, when you're judging yourself, there's really no filters for love to come into you. It's when you release that, filter, that judgment from yourself, then of course there's an authenticity in, in regards to the love that you, that you receive. It's important just to have people understand that we are no different from you just because we love the same sex. Don't stop your fight because your life is important. I'm definitely a living example that life gets better. This Saturday, a full-day event will be held at the Inner Church Center in Harlem. It's called Breaking Silences, a Caribbean LGBTQ People of Color Symposium. Here to tell us about it are two of the symposium's organizers. Mohamed Amin is the founder and executive director of the Caribbean Equality Project, the group behind the film we just saw. And we also welcome Antoine Craigwell, president and CEO of a media company called DBGM which stands for Depressed Black Gay Men. And welcome to PK Live, gentlemen. Thank you for Thank having you. us. So we would be upset with you for having this symposium in Harlem with all the Caribbean people here. <laughs> but the work is so good that we're going to let it pass and welcome you back home next year. Yes. But tell us about the impetus and what you expect to happen this weekend. So we have an amazing program scheduled. We have HIV outreach. We're going to do free HIV testing. We also have mental health counselors that's going to be available to speak to the community. We also have um, immigration workshops that's happening throughout the day. And we have amazing cultural performances, all from artists from the Caribbean, showcasing their talent, LGBT individuals. And it's part of us uniting our community for education to empower and create supportive spaces, which currently doesn't really exist for Caribbean LGBTQ individuals in New York City. Well, is that why you sort of came up with a symposium? What, what's the, why was the sincere focus on uh, Caribbean LGBTQ? Um, Kim Watson, who is the founder and one of the partners for CK Life, uh, an organization in the Bronx that works with uh, helping people to transition from one gender to the other, 
Um, she was featured in a news report about the possibility of being deported to, to Barbados. And as a transgender woman, um, she would have faced a lot of trouble and torture and problems in Barbados, mm -hmm. because Barbados is a former British colony, like Guyana and Trinidad and Jamaica and Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And many of these Caribbean countries still hold their um, British colonial laws Arcane against, laws, yeah. against yeah. buggery. Right. So yeah. even though in England the British government had outlawed and decriminalized same-sex relationships back since the 1960s, mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, despite the fact that many Caribbean countries had become independent and some republic, they had changed their laws. They, they, they still included the penal code for buggery. From which is what it's called, days. from the, from yeah. the colonial days, yeah. in their new constitutions, in their new criminal laws. So Kim was afraid that if she went back to Barbados, she would face torture and perhaps even worse. Okay. Um, so when we saw that, we realized that Brooklyn, for example, is Brooklyn Central. Right. Mm -hmm. And Brooklyn has a heavy population of people from the Caribbean, many who have escaped from their Caribbean countries to come here, mm -hmm. arguably to live in the anonymity that New York City provides it in among its 8 million people, and be themselves in some respects. As many people around the United States, black Americans, have left towns and cities around the country and moved to New York to give them that kind of ability to be open, to be anonymous, to be themselves. But following them, especially if they happen to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, is the stigma, is the shame, is the embarrassment that comes to their families if they come out even while they're here. So we know that in Brooklyn, for example, where there's one of the highest rates of HIV, yeah. concentrated in Bed-Stuy, Brownsville, yeah. East New York, Crown Heights, um, according to the New York City Department of, of Health you know, statistics going back to um, as of 2012, yeah. that many who are living hidden lives their sexuality is hidden, are likely to contract HIV much quicker yeah. and not even want to do anything about it, because if they're living at a family member or sharing a room, they don't want the recover. person to, to, see the, to see the medication, if they're taking medication, right. so they're not going to go and get treatment. So, okay. Mohammed, hearing these numbers and knowing about those situations, was it your idea to make something for within the community, for folks to get together, or the balance of bringing a different sort of image to folks from the Caribbean who are LGBTQ as well? So I started the Caribbean Equality Project for this reason. Um, currently, there's um, several um, Caribbean LGBT social groups, mm -hmm. but when it comes to support and outreach, there really isn't any focusing on education, focusing on outreach. You know, Antoine does an amazing job with DBGM, and this collaboration, it's a coalition of Caribbean-oriented organizations that really came together for this import, uh, important work. And it's the first symposium. When you think about it, there's so many symposiums happening around New York, around the country, but not focusing on Caribbean LGBTQ people. And this is the first one that's happening right here in New York City, where we have a large Caribbean population. And like Antoine said, with that, it comes with the baggage of stigma and shame associated with being gay. And being gay and having HIV, it's like, you know, you don't even think about it. We created uh, the, the clip you guys saw from uh, My Truth, My Story. It's a larger film. Yes, uh, My Truth, My Story is really about sharing authentic, unspoken stories of LGBTQ individuals. We saw Tyra. Tyra is one of the first trans-Caribbean uh, individual from Tobago, and she was so happy to share her story with us. And we're actually going to be screening her entire story at the symposium, where we're going to be talking—we have a trans identity panel, and we're talking about our trans community. Within the Caribbean itself, this is a subject that's not even talked about. And this is going to be the first panel discussion we're having with trans women sharing their stories and what it's like, and we're going to be screening Tyra's story at the symposium. Well, speaking well, of screenings, screenings, yeah, we also have uh, <laughs> uh, the trailer from yes. You Are Not Alone, so let's, yes. let's go to that. Still in the closet about my homosexuality. I'm still trying to come to grips with being gay. Being raised in the church, that was a big, big no-no. The good books say a marriage is between a man and a woman. What's wrong with you? Do you need to see somebody? Do you need help? That was the one thing that severed any relationship that we ever could have. 
I was promiscuous. And I stopped counting after 100. Hey, I'm my experience, if that's what you want to call it. I was actually a college student at 19 dealing with HIV. If I'm going to die anyway, why am I fighting? I just wasn't happy anymore with life or myself. I think I was kind of forced into believing that this was just a part of life. I guess I knew when I woke up in the hospital on a gurney being wheeled into the emergency room after taking a handful of muscle relaxers, that was a clear sign that something was up. The, the problem is in your head at the moment, so you gotta talk to other people, you've gotta share what's going on inside. You just kinda gotta get over your homophobia. You need to pray and ask for forgiveness. It's not as simple as that. because often their voices have not been heard. Your voice is part of your body. It needs to be connected to who you are. It's who we be. I don't do black, I be black. I don't do male, I be male. I don't do gay, I be gay. This is you, and this is how God made you, and this is, I believe, how God has made me. Talk about that pain, being in an anti-gay and black world. We are not meant to be inauthentic for very long. So I don't have to be perfect being me. I just have to be me. Well, what are you going to do on the last day of judgment? I said, I'm going to say to Allah, Allah, get you a big popcorn, a giant soda, and let the video roll. Awesome, great job, great job. You know, you are not alone. It's also about the, letting people know that, you know, there's other people out there like them as well. They bring up the issue of, of mental health. Um, can you tell us about when the symposium is once again and how people are gonna get together and, and discuss Absolutely. these issues? Um, the symposium is happening this Saturday, uh, March 12th. It's gonna be at the Intershore Center and everyone can register online. We actually have an event page. You can search us on Facebook at Breaking Silences and you're able to register for the symposium. Currently, we have about 170 registrants. Um, everyone can take part of it. We have limited, right now, limited access to like refreshments and that sort of thing, but everyone is welcome to really be a part of this. Mental health is a really big part of the program. We really wanna focus this. We, we really want us, our community to talk about mental health and remove the shame and stigma that's associated with it because in order for us to heal and grow, we have have to heal ourselves and we really want our community to really come together for this one symposium to take advantage of all the amazing support we have for our community there at Saturday. Okay, and if they can't make the symposium, how do they reach you, if they the can, Equality they Project can, and? For the Caribbean Equality Project, we're on Facebook. You can contact us at CaribbeanEqualityProject.org. Um, we also have our Facebook link. You can contact us at Facebook, search for the Caribbean Equality Project. And Antoine? And DBGM, you've got uh, DBGM.org and you can contact us at info at dbgm.org. Also, we have a Facebook and Twitter and Instagram accounts as well. Well, congratulations on the first one. No, guys. thank you. We're looking forward to having more of these. All right. And next you year in Brooklyn. It. Yes, in Brooklyn next year, definitely. <laughs>